Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Shantanu Ganguly from Knowledge Management Division of Terry. Today, we are going to talk on the module National Information Infrastructure from the paper Knowledge Society. The major objectives of this paper will highlight on some of the very salient points or salient issues which are dwell in this entire country in India. Information dissemination and accessibility, which is an underlying factor for sustainable economic, political, communal, and societal development. Information policy, which affects all of us because without information, we cannot function individually and definitely not in a society. And the information society produces enormous amount of information, information technologies, enable to collect, store, archive information and access it at any time and anywhere in the most modern ways. Now looking at the background, Users of information and communications technology, such as, for example, the fiber optic cable, which is called as a coaxial cable, they have had an enormous impact on the creation, reproduction, and dissemination of copyrighted works, which are written by the research fraternity of the entire globe. Emergence of Information and communication technology, which is in abbreviated form called as ICT, has made possible the development of the National Information Infrastructure, which is called as NII, which has generated both unprecedented challenges and important opportunities for a large number of people in this society. Information superhighway, the dawn of the information age. This vision talks of a transformation from the industrial to the information age, causing a substantial a change in the information society. We move from an agricultural to an information society, and the production workers replaced by knowledge workers. Reinventing the government new ways of delivering the services, increasing public access to government information, enabling the public to express its views by electronic or email, allowing public participation in decision-making process on specific issues, shifts of power from national to local and regional levels. Societal and cultural impacts Harnessing the powers of ICTs to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of education and training. Increase the capacity, manage the demand for transport, improve health, service efficiency and help public participation in the democratic system. Now, as a LIS professional, you know, there are four major components, data, information, knowledge, and wisdom. And currently in the, this 21st century, it's always called as we are in the knowledge era. And knowledge has a direct impact on the economic development of any country. So, a concept came out or derived in the National Information Infrastructure called as KBE or Knowledge Based Economy. We have seen in the past there was an agriculture era, there was an industrial era, so now we are into knowledge era which has an impact on the economy. Education system that ensures that citizens are equipped to acquire 
use and share the knowledge. Innovation systems that bring together the researchers and the businesses in commercial applications of science and technology together. Whatever innovation system or whatever the research and development that is taking place, taken place by these researchers are percolates down for the business application so that it can reach to a society, an information society, infrastructure that gives all people access to affordable and effective information and communications. An economic and institutional framework that ensures a stable macroeconomic environment, competition, flexible labor markets, and adequate social protection. Now, future of libraries, if we look at in this under this concept of national information infrastructure, it is enormous the guarantee access for future generations when i'm talking about access it is means access to knowledge access to information enable access to everyone who wants to do research that's why there was a boom has taken place into the digital publishing online publishing online research has gone into a new paradigm shift it supports the research communities in key areas for social and economic benefits. It enriches the cultural life of the nations. And it leads to the collaborate in growing the world's the knowledge base on a particular contemporary area. People will continue to use the library as an interactive, I'm using the word in quotes, interactive research space so that there is a collaborative research takes place between two disciplines under the domain of interdisciplinary research. Libraries will need to continue to demonstrate their value, consolidation of print collections, cloud repositories of the entire content, automated preservation and infrastructure will be more common. Libraries will be interoperable. Now, in 2012, the government of India came out with a national ICT policy, which is called a National Information and Communication Technology Policy. This was initiated by the Ministry of Communications and Information Technology the government of India, the major components of this policy is to increase the revenues of IT and information technology enabled services industry from a hundred billion US dollar currently to a 300 billion US dollar by the 2020 and expand the exports from the 69 million US dollars currently to 200 billion US dollars by 2020. So you can imagine the escalated growth that is going to take place. To gain a significant global market share in the emerging technology and services, to promote the innovation and R&D, in cutting edge technologies and development of applications and solutions in areas like localization, local based services, mobile value added services, client computing, social media, utility models, and many more. Also, to encourage the adoption of ICTs in key economic and strategic sectors to improve their competitiveness and productivity. Because it can have a competitive advantage over other nations to provide a fiscal benefits to small and medium enterprises, SMEs, and the startup companies. There is a lot of entrepreneurs are there for adoption of 
appropriate information technology in the value creation to create a pool of 10 million additional skilled manpower in information and communication technology and to make at least one individual in every household an illiterate to provide for mandatory delivery of an affordable access to all public services in electronic mode like for example today you have the mobile and with the application of mobile basically you can get access to various services public services which are available through mobile apps to enhance a complete transparency accountability efficiency reliability and decentralization in the government and in particular in delivery of public services to leverage ICT for key social sector initiatives like education health rural development and financial services to promote both equity and quality to make India the global hub for development of language technologies because India is a country where more a quite a good number of languages are there to encourage and facilitate development of content accessible in all Indiana languages and therefore also to help the bridge the digital divide between them some of the other objectives also to enable the access of content and ICT applications by differently abled people to foster inclusive development to leverage ICT for expanding the workforce and enabling the lifelong learning it's not one time to strengthen the regulation and security framework for ensuring a security secure and legally compliant cyberspace ecosystem because when you put anything on the online framework or online system cyber security is must otherwise it can be plagiarized it can be pirated many things can happen on that to adopt open standards because currently in the global world open standards open access is creating a huge revolution and it should promote the open source and open technologies in terms of resources software etc and etc now why national knowledge network was set up which is in short abbreviated form we call it as nkn this project is aimed at establishing a strong and robust internal indian network which will be capable of providing secure and reliable connectivity for anywhere anytime NKN is intended to connect all the knowledge and research based institutions in the country using high bandwidth and low latency network. If you look at the architecture of National Knowledge Network, it is establishing a high speed backbone connectivity, which is mandatory for any kind of an online domain which will enable knowledge and information sharing among all the like-minded researchers on a contemporary research area, enabling collaborative research, development and innovation, facilitate advanced distance education in specialized fields such as engineering, science, medicine, social sciences, humanities, many things a lot of open educational resources are going to be available in the open domain forum like for example this epg partial program itself 
it is available in the UGC Inflibnet Open Domain Forum. It is going to be available. So, so the people, those who are in the remote areas, those who are unable to access to come to the classrooms and attend the classes, so they can have a virtual online classes too or online access to the vast amount of resources facilitating an ultra high speed backbone for e governance facilitating integration of different sectoral networks in the field of research education health commerce and governance nkn or national knowledge network applications Countrywide Virtual Classrooms NKN is providing a platform for delivering effective distance education where teachers and students can interact in real time. This is especially significant in a country like India where access to education is limited by factors such as geography, lack of infrastructure facilities, etc. The network enables co-sharing of information such as classroom lectures, presentations and handouts among different institutions. When we talk about collaborative research, the NKN enables collaboration among researchers from different entities like Gloriad, TN3, Garuda, CERN, etc. NKN also enables sharing of scientific databases and remote access to advanced research facilities. Virtual Library The virtual library involving sharing of journals, books and research papers across different institutions is a natural application for National Knowledge Network. Sharing of computing services High performance computing is critical for national security, industrial productivity, and advances in science and engineering. The network enables a large number of institutions to access high performance computing to conduct advanced research in areas such as weather monitoring, earthquake engineering, and other computationally intensive fields. Grid computing. The NKN has the capability to handle high bandwidth with low latency and provision to overlay grid computing. Some of the grid based applications are climate change, global warming, science projects like Large Hadron Collider or LHC, and ITER. The NKN can be the platform to realize many such innovative applications. The Garuda grid has enhanced its power and stability by migrating to NKN. Network testbed. NKN provides testbed for testing and validation of services before they are made available to the production network. NKN also provides an opportunity to test new hardware and software, vendor interoperability, etc. E-governance. NKN acts as a super highway for integrating e-governance, infrastructure such as government data centers and networks. NKN provides bulk for e-governance applications. Now let us take an example, uh, go through some of the major national projects of India. A total of 11,810 Quotes have been computerized when the last module was written. I am giving the data from there only itself. Around 8,300 district and subordinate courts across India have started providing key services like case filing, registration, case allocations, causeless, daily case proceedings case registrations, etc. Let us take an example of e-hospital. 
e hospital which is basically based on the e platform on an hospital at nic has implemented around 17 different hospitals across the country including all india institute of medical sciences new delhi dr ram manohar loya hospitals new delhi sports injury center at sabdajang hospital new delhi etc there is an another example of you know mobile fertilizers now this is very interesting as far as the farmers are concerned and all because since india is an agriculture based economy today mobile based fertilizer monitoring system which is called as mfms for phase 1 the information visibility up to a retailer level of direct fertilizer subsidy transfer project has been made fully operational now the overall objective of this project is to disburse the subsidy directly to the beneficiaries and to ensure availability of fertilizers in time and in sufficient quantity to the farmers now technology solution development for phase 2 to capture the details of the fertilizer sales to farmers and part of its subsidy payment to the companies based on these sales and for the phase 3 for the direct transfer of subsidy to the beneficiaries and the aadhar will be linked to the bank account based on this fertilizer purchases has been undertaken let us take an example of this e district the portal of the e district picture is given in your text module and all you can also look into that also the e district portal provides an analysis of these citizen centric services in various states including the services offered under e district mmp the services have been categorized into 34 core services for conducting this entire analysis and this analysis is based on the data compiled and sent by the respective district information offices of the national informatic center it contains data collected from most of the states and union territories across different districts this is a very interesting project which uh, national informatics center have started because you know data plays a very very important role as far as the research is concerned or in many various ways an enormous amount of data i would say not enormous but a horrendous amount of data is generated this data can be structured can be unstructured now throughout the world and even in india there is a lot of development is taking place as far as data is concerned it was the ministry of science and technology and national informatics center and all they started thinking then data can play a pragmatic role in the decision making process in the regulation and framework creation it can help to take certain important decisions by the government of india but these data can only be accessible if it is available in an open domain so the data portal india has been set up in compliance with the policy framework called ndsap national data sharing and accessible policy ndsap 
and you can access it at data.gov.in. This is a single point to provide us an access to all the data sets published by the different government data departments in open format and it has been made mandatory except in some cases where the national security is concerned. Data portal facilitates forming of communities around data sets, domain of interest such as agriculture, education, health, power, etc. and many more. Then there is an interesting section called e-post. As you know, there was a time when people used to go to the post office, then there was a, a you know, you have to get a postcard or an inland letter, you have to write something or you, for emergency you can write a telegram or so, but those days are gone back. So even the Indian postal system has gone, has taken a new leap. You know, email is the most fastest way today to communicate with somebody. So there was another concept which has come up, which is developed by the government of India under the National Information Infrastructure, is called e-post, where customer can send their messages to any address in India with a combination of electronic transmission and physical delivery through a network of more than 1 lakh 55,000 post offices. And these e-post sends message as a soft copy through an internet and at the destination it is delivered to addressee in the form of a hot copy. So you know the, you know, the transportation cost or the cost involved in you know through you know the different the kind of hurdles many times the post doesn't reaches that kind of problems or hurdles or constraints has completely taken a back seat with the incubation of this particular concept of e-post and this e-post cost just rupees 10 per page of A4 size, which is very easily affordable. So, national information institutions and programs, if we look at, are many. National Library, which is there in Calcutta at Belvedere Road. You have a National Social Science Documentation Center, which is under ICSSR. You have NISCARE, which also houses the National Science Library. The InflipNet, which is a basically a network of all the universities and their libraries. National Medical Library. Indian Agriculture Research Institute Library, or we call it as IRI, National NASCOM, which is basically a hub of all the social uh, software companies, National Institute of Smart Governments, DelNet called Developing Library Network, National Missions have come up now, which is called as National Mission on Libraries. National Mission for Manuscripts, National Informatics Centers, and last but not the least, the National Knowledge Commission. As you can see in this screenshot of the National Library, which is constituted by the Ministry of Culture, Government of India, under the governance actually, under the governance of Ministry of Culture, Government of India, the aim of the National Library is to acquisition and conservation of all significant national production of printed material excluding the ephemera. Collection of printed material concerning the country, no matter where it is published. Acquisition and conservation of foreign material required by the country. Rendering of bibliographical and documentation services of the current 
and retrospective material, both general and specialized, and also acting as a referral center, purveying the full and accurate knowledge. Today, this National Library is an iconic figure, a prestigious institution of this country, and it is available at Belvedere Road in Kolkata. So, if you happen as an LIS professional, if you happen to visit to this particular National Library, you should see how this library has come up today, which was earlier called as an imperial library it has the it has got a rich collection of resources and especially the complete there is a division called bhasha bhavan which is basically on language and the architecture of this national library it has got a collection of some of the rarest of the rarest documentations and resources which are of highly acclaimed and which are extremely prestigious for this country. National Social Science Documentation Center was established in 1969 as a division of the ICSSR with the objective to provide library and information support services to researchers in social sciences. And for those who are working in the academic institutions, autonomous research organizations, policy making, planning and research inputs of government departments, business and industry etc. The National Social Science Documentation Center provides a large number of facilities to their members. It has a very interesting and a rich collection of documentation library and reference service it provides. It has got a collection of unpublished doctoral dissertations, research reports, current and old volumes of the social science journals of India and foreign origin. It has the literature search service from printed and digital databases like CD-ROMs, floppies, online databases, etc. Compilation of short bibliographies on request, they can also provide it as a point of a different service. They also provide study grants to the budding researchers for collection of research material from various libraries located in different parts of India. It also provides financial assistance providing for taking up the bibliographical and documentation projects. Document delivery service is provided by pro procuring books and journals on interlibrary loan by photocopying the documents. The short term training courses are organized for the research scholars, social scientists, librarians and IT professionals to acquaint them with the latest information and communication technologies. And last but not the least, the cyber cafe or internet access free internet access is available in the documentation center to facilitate access to resources on social sciences area. CSIR, that is Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, set up an organization called NISCARE, formerly known as INSDOC. Now, this Organization is a central knowledge hub for scientific and technological research to facilitate the research to the different people. It provides a formal linkages of communication among the scientific community. The center provides and disseminates science and technology information to general public school students to inculcate the interest in science among them, to collect, collate and disseminate information on plant, animal and mineral wealth of the in country, to harness information technology applications in information management with particular reference to science communication and modernizing libraries, to act as a facilitator 
in furthering the economic, social, industrial, scientific and commercial developments by providing timely access to relevant and accurate information and to develop human resources in science communication, library documentation and information science and science and technology information management systems and services. This screenshot will show you a glimpses of the National Medical Library. This uh, institution is located near your uh, All India Institute of Medical Sciences. It's a very prestigious institute as far as the medical sciences are concerned. Now, this particular National Medical Library, it was set up realizing the need for a central library to support the academic research and clinical work of biomedical professionals in the country. The DGHS or what we call as the Director General of Health Services Library was developed gradually and declared as the Central Medical Library in 1961. And as the National Medical Library was set up in 1966, this multi-storied building of the library having a carpet area of about 70,000 square feet and is situated very near to the Ames. This library provides a large number of knowledge-based services to the entire biomedical professionals fraternity in this country. It has got large number of serv services. It helps the researchers in this fraternity to invent, investigate and innovate new techniques, methodologies and different kinds of drug discoveries in the field of medicine. Indian Agricultural Research Institute or in abbreviated form we call it as IARI is a very prestigious institution doing an extensive research in the field of agriculture sciences. IRI is one of the largest and the finest agrobiological libraries in Southeast Asia housing a total of 6 lakh publications including 1 lakh books and monographs 350,000 journals, volumes, 45,000 bulletins, 15,000 postgraduate theses, 10,000 pamphlets, 30,000 news clippings, 30,000 reports and other reference materials. The library has on its role 2,000 members and it comprises of students, scientists and technical staff. It also serves about 8,000 visitors every year. The library functions as the depository of Food Agriculture Organization FAO, IDRC and AVRDC publication and also as the national depository for CGAR Institute's publications. In Flipnet, known as Information and Library Network, a computer communication network for linking libraries and information centers in universities. Deemed to be universities, colleges, UGC information centers, institutions of national importance and R&D institutions, etc. The main aim is to avoid the duplication efforts, to promote and establish communication facilities to improve capability in information transfer and access that provides support to scholarship, learning, research and academic pursuit through cooperation and involvement of agencies concerns. The National Association of Software and Service Companies, which is abbreviated as NASCOM, is the industry association for the IT BPM sector in India, a not-for-profit organization funded by the industry. Its objective is to build a growth-led sustainable technology and business services segment in the country. The IT and IT-enabled sector skills council or SSC formed in partnership with the National Skill Development Council or NSDC 
NASCOM has also contributed to the development of two organizations. The Data Security Council of India, which helps drive corporate social responsibility initiatives in the country. The main idea behind setting up of NISG, which is called as National Institute for Smart Government, as shown in the screenshot, was the revolution in information and communication technologies which necessitates the government to keep up with the changing environment and revolutionize the way the government interacts with citizens and business entities. In order to transform the government departments and agencies from department-centric mode of working to a citizen-centric way, the National E-Governance Program, or called NEGP, was conceived. Delnet, or which is called very famous, called as Developing Library Network, has been established with the prime objective of promoting resource sharing among the libraries through the development of a network of libraries. It aims to collect, store and disseminate information besides offering computerized services to users to coordinate efforts for suitable collection development and also to reduce unnecessary duplication wherever possible. In fact, this particular organization is extremely important for all LIS professionals because tomorrow when you are going to be a part of any of the libraries, this library, this, this particular service, what you call as Delnet service, is going to play a very important role. Let me give you an example. For example, a particular book requested by a user and it is not available in your library because every library cannot have all the resources. So what will you do? If you take the membership of Delnet, then in that case, you would be able to, you will come to know actually that which library is having that particular book. Now, there are two options for the library information science profession there, professional there. One, you can buy the book straight away from the market. And other thing, you can arrange that book from on interlibrary loan from other institutions. So, Delnet play a very important role in resource sharing by arranging this book for the user for some, from some other libraries. So that is how Delnet is extremely famous in throughout India. National Mission on Libraries has been set up by Ministry of Culture, Government of India on May 2012 in pursuance of National Knowledge Commission recommendations for sustained attention for development of libraries and information science sector. The scheme consists of four components creation of National Virtual Library or NVLI, setting up of National Mission on Libraries, Model Libraries, and Quantitative and Qualitative Survey of Libraries, and last but not the least, capacity building for the LIS professionals at different levels. India possesses an estimate of 5 million manuscripts probably the largest collection in the world and it is into different subject areas in different languages and all. These cover a variety of themes, textures and aesthetics, scripts, languages, calligraphies, illuminations and illustrations. The primary role of National Mission for Manuscript is aimed to locate, document, preserve and render this accessible to connect India's past with its future, its memory with its aspirations. National Informatics Center is a very no important nodal body under the aegis of Ministry of Communications and Information Technology, Government of India. 
Informatics late development program of the government has been spearheaded by National Informatics Center to derive a competitive advantage by implementing ICT applications in social and public administration. The following major activities are being taken setting up of ICT infrastructure, implementation of national and state level e governance projects products and services, consultancy to the government departments, research and development and capacity building programs for a lot of amateur as well as advanced level IT professionals. National Knowledge Commission has been given a mandate to guide policy and direct reforms, focusing on certain key areas such as education, science and technology, agriculture, industry, e-governance, etc. Easy access to knowledge creation and preservation of knowledge systems, dissemination of knowledge and better knowledge services are the core concerns of the Commission. If you visit to this particular website of the National Knowledge Commission, which is headed by none other than a great person called Sam Petroda, who brought the entire uh, telecommunication revolution in this country, has submitted a large number of reports. And each and every report and recommendations which he has formalized in this National Knowledge Commission is unique of its, com com uh, of its own. So all LIS professional and being a knowledge professional today should meticulously go through each and every resources that are available under this National Knowledge Commission. So in the concluding part, I would like to mention that the government of India has taken a lot of initiatives at national level as far as the information infrastructure is concerned. And all these are for the betterment of the citizen of the society of the India. They want to empower each and every individual or each and every citizen to be as netizens. And the facilities to access to various kinds of knowledge, to services, to ease out their life, different kind of initiatives are taken up by the government of India. And these are extremely useful for each one of us in this country. So, as a library information science professional, you should always go through each of these websites. You should know and keep yourself upgraded and updated on these subject areas, and it should be in a regular format. It should be a regular way. It cannot be done only once because these initiatives are at nascent stage today, but it is incremental. It is having a meteoric growth in coming years. So, you have to come up to the expectations and to see where you can also play as a library information science professional an important role in building up or contributing something in the national information infrastructure development for this country. Thank you students.